Second. This is the BAM Podcast with Malcolm Springer. The BAM Podcast is brought to you by Huck Hats. Huck Hats are individually created and never duplicated. Huck Hats are custom, high-quality hats made in Franklin, Tennessee. Go to huckhats.com. For a discount on Huck Hats, type in the code 10, and that way he'll give you 10% discount from hearing that on our podcast. We are the BAM Podcast. We're here with Dakota Portman. And uh, if you could, hit that subscribe button, and you'll be able to see all of our good old podcasts all the time. We got some real interesting people on here. And Dakota Portman is a uh, he's a country, new and up-and-coming country star. And, uh, you know, how has it been? Where are, you, where are you from, Dakota? Tell everybody, because I know where you're from. Maple Valley, Washington is my hometown. And, uh... <clears throat> Wow, that got really got weird for a second. Um, <laughs> that sounded weird. Um, I'm from Maple Valley, Washington, um, just outside of Seattle, about 35 minutes. And uh, we've got a lot of trees. Now, does Maple Valley mean that there's maple trees? No. Why did they call it that, I wonder? I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. I, th- I mean, we have some maple trees, but I don't think it's... we got more pine trees than we do maples but so and evergreens sam as always has, sam as always they have the greatest snow cap i mean does anybody else in the world have a snow cap besides them dude i don't i can't even, i tried to mimic it and i failed do you know what's in it coffee and ice like half and half really i i, I mean it's gotta i don't know what they do to to make it that like that Mm. But I know it's so, it's so good. It's so good. You gotta tell them light eyes or they'll get a brain freeze. Yeah. Anyway, Sam is always placed here in uh, Berry, Hill. Berry Hill. Good old this good old Shire. Anyway, back to where you're from, Maple Valley. Now that's how many? That's how far from Seattle? About thirty five minutes southeast. Now here's the here's the thing that I'm not understanding. So your climate is completely different than Seattle itself, right? Kind of, yeah, a little bit. Not by much. Really? Yeah. So it's it's 96 degrees in Seattle right now. I mean, it, but Seattle goes through I mean, it it gets hot like 2, 3 months out of the year. And it normally starts during middle July. Oh, really? Yeah. So it's a it, rainy season all year round other than Pretty that. much. Yeah, it's it's just wet and it, if not, it's just overcast and drizzly gray. Looks like a lot. It looks a lot like Scotland. I know that when I did a records up there, I did some records up there in eighteen. I love the climate because I love the rain, mm-hmm. uh, and it even snowed on us up there. And I know that snow isn't a big thing in Seattle. Is it where you're at, or does it snow a lot? It, um, actually, it it's hit and miss. Um, but it, same thing. It's a weird, weird weather. We don't normally get snow in the lowlands where I live until it could be like crazy. It could be November. It could be December. It could be January. It could be February. And, and we'll get snow. Really? Yes. Just sporadically, right? And then, I mean, it happens at the so the tail end of so December. Not, it is a little like But up, up in the mountains, of course, like you're, you're above... A couple thousand feet. There's snow. Well, I've been to all have, the time. I've never. I've, I've been. Here, I've never been to your house. But can you see snow on the top of the mountains from there? Yeah. Yeah. From and it's 96 degrees outside. Yeah. And you're sitting there looking at snow on top of the mountains. Yeah. That's how it was in freaking in, in New Mexico when I went there. It's just cold years ago. I saw snow on top of the mountains, and it's the desert. I'm sleeping in the desert, and freaking it's 108 degrees outside. Yep. I mean, but you, I mean, you can see like time lapse photos, time right. lapse photos, whatever you want to call them. Um, the, the news puts out the local stations of like the. Uh, well, he's close to the microphone. The. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm serious. Um, I, I, I don't want to be known as the loud. We guy. don't have to talk about the weather. I'm going here to talk about you. How's touring going? How, how's the touring going? It was good. Uh, we made a lot of new friends. Uh, every place that we played at wanted us back. So that was a that was a win in our book. Is your is your band like? Do you have the same band, or you've been switching up a lot? I've been switching it up. 
maybe. Yeah, I got guys up. <clears throat> I got a a new kid that's uh, been playing with me, and a uh, kid's awesome. He's got the drive. I mean, you know what that means if he's got the drive. Um, he's hungry. Uh, I took him on the road to Immigrant Montana, Jackson Hole, Wyoming. I mean, big, like, kind of big venues to be on but, your first tour. Um, like the old saloon, I mean, in Immigrant, it's a, it's a awesome place. Dwight Yoakam's played there. Uh, the Marshall Tucker Band's playing there. Uh, then we played at the Million Dollar Cowboy in Jackson Hole, and that, that place is wicked. That place is cool. If you ever get a chance, go there. Um, but then we flew out to Missouri and went to Nashville, came down here and played. Uh, Where'd you play at Missouri? We played. Uh, Did you play at Diamonds? No, not Diamonds. We played uh, the Rose. Oh, that's in Columbia. Yeah, Columbia. That's, uh, I mean, that's the huge Mizzou town. I heard it's a beautiful venue. It's not the same, though, as what I heard as far as the town goes. You know, it's kind of went with South Carolina, like Seattle. I don't know. No, I mean, yeah, I, I can't. Really nobody's say. nobody's trying to, to 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 form a new country in the middle of Columbia, though. <laughs> <laughs> true, that is true. I would tell you, man. I would tell you, you know, hey, man, you know, you can't say all that much about all that kind of stuff on here. It's just like, wow, man. I tell you what, I got a new. I got. I'm gonna start my new country at my apartment, man. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna do. Same. It's my new country. Come on, honey. I'm president. You're, <laughs> you're the first lady. <laughs> uh, oh well, God. today's Tiff's birthday, and I'm, you know, I've already bought first her way too much. First lady Springer. I've already well, I bought her way too much stuff, but uh, so I heard you're having a little one. I am. Are you getting married? Yeah. Tying a knot. Tying. T- well, well, I. It was. It was our call. To, to do it before the baby was uh, born because of our grandparents and stuff wanted it to be right and so shotgun wedding it was <laughs> are you already married no when are you getting there September 10th mm. that's right around the corner I know you're making me look bad Hey man, how am I making you look bad? Because I'm because we ain't even set a date yet. Really, like a real definite date. We were gonna get married in fall and. Anyway, this ain't about me, but uh, so it's a boy. It's a boy. Oh, it's a boy, a little devil. So <laughs> let's talk about uh, the first single that you came out with, American Made. American Made. Um, I know me and you wrote it together. Um, l- lyrically, you know, of course, you know, you wrote most of the lyrics, and and um, what are you? Um, what do you think? I think we need to release that song again in a better time. I think we do too. Um, I thought the first video we had was perfect. <laughs> I still, I still got to embed that in the website. We're gonna put that in the secret. <laughs> Subscribe to the Dakota Porman band page on the uh, the old interweb. And there's, hell, there's Kyle O'Dell. Oh, Kyle O'Dell. You know, and then post it on there, and that way. Uh, People can see the cool video that hey, we made. T- t- hey, tell Kyle to come here for a second. Anyway, uh, we're not really talking about Bigfoot yet, but we're going to. <laughs> well, that that leads me to some more questions. I, 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 how um, do you plan on moving to Nashville? Mm-hmm. You do. Mm-hmm. And I've already told. I, we've already had this conversation and stuff. Oh, I know, but this is a podcast, man. You got to tell everybody your plans. Oh, man. I know. And oh, yeah. Oh, let's stop on American May because the single that's out now is Hippie at Heart, right? Yeah, Hippie at Heart. All right. What in the world is that about? <sighs> <laughs> now is the time for everybody to leave the room if they're uncomfortable about weed. Um, <laughs> it's about weed. It's about what I did growing up in a. Uh, just before I actually like dabbled with old marijuana, I just used to just be like, man, I want to, I want to, I want to rock and roll. I want to play loud guitar and whatnot. And then all of a sudden, it was like I tried weed for the first time when I was like eighteen, nineteen years old. And okay, then, and then it was just like secretive. 
right? Right. And uh, and then my mom started doing it. And I was like, you gave me so much shit growing up about doing drugs. And then here you are, Miss Hippie, right? And so, like, we, we, we would smoke together. And uh, I, I, was, I hung out with a friend of mine one night. And his wife came out and gave me the title and put pen to paper the next day and got blitzed out of my mind and hippie at heart so came, she said came hippie to at life. heart yeah she goes you should write a song called hippie at heart well that's one of the ones i mean you came to the table with a couple but uh, it's one of the ones on the record that we did um that you came with the whole song and mm-hmm. played it and i went well that sounds like that sounds good i mean what we what want me to do with it <laughs> <laughs> let's cut it let's cut it and uh i remember in tracking it went real real hard now i just mm-hmm. want to tell the reason why having him on the podcast is not only to talk about his Bigfoot adventures in the, up in Washington, but to the only artist I've ever recorded that I've never, I didn't really have to overdub at all. Uh, now that's a vocalist right there. I try. I try. <laughs> I, absolutely, I, I do absolutely no conditioning, no practice, no nothing. I just get it. We did a lot of pre production. We did do a lot of pre production. And, um, we had some big time players too, man. Gosh, we had the players on your record. Whew. Paul Allen, um, was the bass player um, from Mark Shoulders, Mark Mark Childers. That's Mark, right, Mark, Mark Childers, Childers from, John Bollinger. <laughs> Mark Childers is with um, Carrie Underwood, Carrie Underwood, and Jason Bowl. Jason Bowl and then with Trey Rick. Trey Hill, Trey Hill, and the one and only. Or, or lap steel player. What, what am I talking about here? John Bollinger? No. Or La- oh, Josh Matheny. Josh Matheny, the man. Oh, the oh dude. Hey, but Mr. Groovy Fingers, Will Hutchins. <laughs> oh, Will Doc- Hutchins. Dr. Groovy Fingers, man. Man, that dude is a bad man. Oh, and he's a man. He's a mean fisherman. You know, my mo- my mother said, man, if you got somebody you're hiring to play piano, you got a good one. Because, you know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a slouch myself, but I'm telling you, that guy is a bad man. I, 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 it was funny because when we were in tracking, he uh, he recorded, he put his phone, uh, he posted a video of him playing Redneck mm-hmm. Romeo. Right. And, and the cash was, they had me working today. It's back and forth, man. He's just firing it away. So, uh, guys, a man. What a tracking session, though. God, that was a that was a good long hard day. It was a good long hard day, you know. And here's what's funny about that session, though. Here's what's funny. So, Jason Bowl calls me. He's like. Man, I hope I don't mess up, man. Paul Allen, you know, being on the session and everything. All right. But, dude, everything's going to be cool, man. Everything's going to be cool. I get another phone call. Hey, man, Mr. Trey. Hey, dude, man, I hope I don't mess up, man, with Paul Allen on the session. <laughs> he goes, I hope I don't mess up. Everything's going to be fine, man. Be and fine. then I get another call, man. I get, who, who, who was it called me? Um uh, Will Hutchins. Will Hutchins. Man, I tell you what, that Paul Allen, big time, man. I hope I don't mess up, man. <laughs> I said, you know what? All of them's like, man, I hope I don't mess up. Paul Allen walks in the door and goes, God, I hope these guys don't fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> Paul's like going, God, I hope these guys don't fuck it up. <laughs> you had to edit that. Beep, beep, beep. Anyway, <laughs> that's what's funny. Well, it, it was funny because that was like my first time being in like a professional like atmosphere with top notch guys, and I messed up. I'm like, oh, fuck, I messed up. And you're like, keep fucking singing. They're fucking. They'll, we'll, we'll edit it later. I'm just like, okay, where the where was I at? You didn't mess up very much though, man. I mean, and there was a lot of times that they got mad at me because they knew I was just getting another vocal take. I know because it wasn't about they played it perfect. You and just it, wanted to capture more magic. I wanted to capture your, your vocals, you know, and I got them. <clears throat> I don't think we did one on that tracking session, one over to up from that session. I think the one over there, I think we had to because of technical things that happened, but we won't talk about that. We won't talk about where over there he is. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, he's gone now. He's gone now. He's gone now. <laughs> Anyway, we love him, but he's oh, just man. Anyway, so you're a hunter. Avid outdoorsman. You're an outdoorsman. If, if, if I get the time. 
What, what what's your favorite thing to hunt? What are you? A duck hunter, deer hunter? Oh man, I'll do it. I do it all. I'll do it all. What's your main? What you what you get excited uh, about? What gets your rocks up, everybody? Huh? Elk. Really? Yeah, man. Just a massive like eight by eight, eight by seven. Just their gut, throat, just scream. Just makes the hairs on your arm stand up, dude. It's really they elk. scream. You ever heard of elk bugle? Man, I have never been elk hunting. Jackson, let's pull up an elk bugle and let's have that on the podcast. You got to cut the tape to the, you know. Yeah, but <laughs> get an elk bugle on here. Yeah, dude, it's it's like they are. It's like a rumble. To, <laughs> is it like not even close? <laughs> <laughs> so, so have you ever? Wow. All right, that's good. Yeah, that's dude. good. It's crazy what they My do. My God, what the hell? You got cut all off that jazz. We just did. It's okay. Dude. But think about it this way. So you're you, you're in the middle of nowhere in the mountains somewhere, and it's 3, 4, 5 o'clock in the morning. You hear that go off in the distance, and you don't know, it, like, the sound of an elk. What would, that, what would you think that would be? If yeah. you didn't know that was an elk. I think that'd be Bigfoot. Right? <laughs> some people are like, oh, man, we heard something go. Dude, I've never even heard, any, I've never even heard anything like that. I gotta be Isn't that crazy? Here. So, do you, should, do, you, do you walk? Do you walk to hunt these things? Or do you, like, get on a four-wheeler and ride around until you see one in an open field and then plow, plow them down? <laughs> we call that fast food. <laughs> 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 no, man. Uh, we, we, we get up in a... We hike, we hike, or we, uh, my dad, my dad just actually bought a side by side, so that just totally leveled the, the playing field, uh, for getting up some trails and stuff that we weren't able to get to before. Um, because when we went over to Montana the l- year before last, um, or last year, I believe it was, um, the roads were just so the roads were just so icy and whatnot. I know I'm I, I got I knew about the microphone stuff right. and now here I am. Um, the roads were just so icy that you couldn't get up with a pickup truck and we ended up going backwards, sliding down a hill at like fifty miles an hour, and coming into a snowbank and finally stopping. We would have went over the side in my uncle's pickup truck had we not stopped and hit that bank. Well, well, you know, here's He the, literally got turned around in six feet. It was hilarious. Well, I mean, when, well, if you went off a side, here's the here's the good part. The good part about it, it's going to be a fun ride down. <laughs> <laughs> yes, But it when was. you get to the bottom, you're going to be dead. Yeah. How far down do you think it was? 25 yards, 50 yards. I mean... To be dead. Enough to kill you. Probably. <sighs> well... So do you have any like, do you have any Bigfoot stories? I'm serious. You're from Washington State. I mean, you believe in the Bigfoot, the big hairy guy, don't you? I mean, there's too many stories not to believe it, or okay. believe that there's something out there. I, I thought that you had ran, not run up on one, but you had heard. I don't know what the story was with doing the record when we did. It's been two years since we did the record. I know. I know you live right there in the heart of it, though, don't you? Mm-hmm. Well. Yeah, I mean, we got the uh, the Olympics, and then we got the Cascades, and then you got just mountain ranges for miles. So Bigfoot is I mean, there. I mean it, this is the thing. I think we were talking about it last, the last time I was here. Mount Rainier, uh-huh. like the state forest. What did we say it was? 437,000 oh, acres. Right. Something that's like right. that, and that's it was right. like seventy-five square miles. That's right. Can you see how many square miles that? What's it called? Mount Rainier National yeah. Forest. Yeah, we'll be able to. This, this. I just want to have a one-on-one podcast with you for a little bit to talk to you about your career and talk about if you have seen Bigfoot. I guess you haven't seen him, but I didn't see him either when I was up there in Washington State. Uh, but. I've I've been like we've gone oh so I, I take that way back three hundred and sixty nine square miles 
the Mount Rainier National Forest is. Square miles. Yep. To acres, I have no clue what that is. 3,600? 3, 369.3 square miles. That's a lot. That's a square. Million? 369.3 square oh, miles. Oh, I was about to say. Square miles. Oh. Well, had an M there. Well, yeah, square with a two at the end. Square. Three hundred ninety-six point three ain't that big. There's uh, ten thousand. There's ten thousand freaking acres. Square. Yeah, uh, Jackson, three hundred sixty-nine point three square miles to acres. Yeah, two hundred thirty-six million acres. Oh. <laughs> now oh. I'm sorry. I don't know my. I. Two hundred thousand. Oh, I I told that's my still, bad. That's still a lot. That's two hundred and thirty six point. Yeah, I was. I mean, off by two hundred, but it's a big g- damn forest. It's a big forest. That's enough for Bigfoot to live and never be seen. Never be seen. Now, one of my best friends, Junior, he says that that Bigfoot is in the clothes folding business. <laughs> <laughs> Come, come again? Well, you know, up there, up there, up uh, around Darren and Morrison, where people go missing, if they find their, they don't find them, but they find their clothes. <laughs> Fold it up next to a tree. What? I've never heard this. Yeah, yeah. I'm not kidding, man. It's on that old um, four. Was it four one one? Yeah, it's uh, Bigfoot 411 or, or Missing 411. Yeah, Missing 411. Okay. You know what I'm talking about? Mm-mm. It's, I've I, never it's seen I think it's Missing 411. Or, yeah, it is. Missing 411 is the thing and it, it up there. Well, the thing about it is you get these people that don't believe in carrying guns. They're these gun activist people. And there's nothing wrong with that. If that's what you want to do, that's fine. I'm just saying that's your deal. Uh, I'm, I'm a gun owner. I hold a lot of guns and a lot of ammo. And it isn't they're they're not to kill people. It's pr- they're protection. They're protection, but mainly to go hunting and for sport. And I don't get to go that much anymore. So, but anyway, um, I used to love it, you know. But now that my, my bird dog's gone, you know, I just I didn't even go duck hunting last year, and the dove season was terrible. I didn't kill one bird. Uh, didn't see, but maybe one or two. We went out there four days late. Well, everybody's done shot the fields out, so. You know, it's a wash. It's really to go. It's really to go visit with your friends. I mean, I care absolutely nothing about killing anything, to be honest with you. But it's fun as it could be to call them, especially duck hunting. Boy, that's fun. I'm not good at calling ducks. I love it, man. <clears throat> now, my my best friend Neil Priggle, he thinks he's an expert duck caller, and you know, and, and here because he's going to listen to the podcast, so. Listen up, son. He's going to teach you something. I have to. I have to admit, I've seen him call some ducks in, but he's a he's he's a Dutch farmer that that blows a duck call and it's got the worst. It's, a bark, 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 bark. it's like a freaking chicken bark. You know, I don't even know. It's like a chicken getting killed or something. <laughs> but for some reason, he can land some ducks. But. You know, we've gotten arguments about who. It's the tone. It's the tone. He's talking to a record producer. Dude, talking about tone. I will tell anyway. you right now. I, I went on a I went on a duck hunt with a guide uh, out by the potholes and back home, and uh, his name is Shelby Ross. And I was we were in a duck blind, just having the greatest time of our life. He goes, "Man, my daughter described duck hunting perfectly. It's a social event interrupted by gunfire. It is." It's it literally is. what it is. It's a social event well, interrupted by a gunfire. Now, I have to take up for my best friend, Neil. I have to say, he knows when to call. And that's his secret. It ain't the tone. No, but they, they say- just hear something off in the distance that's resembling a duck. So, when he knows right when they're turning, right when to call them, when they're turning, and he knows when when to call them and when not to call them. And, and that's, that, that's the whole secret. To the to his thing is because he does know really really good about he can tell right when it's time and when it's not. Now when you duck hunt up there, do y'all do a lot of calling? Do y'all I mean do you? Oh yeah, that's what I was saying, man. He just he I was I even asked him. I was like, how do you call him? Like, is there? He goes, just yell at him, get their attention. 
Really? Literally. And, no. and it works. I'm not kidding you. That's what he said. So so that's really what... Scream my, at him. That's really what my best friend Neil is doing. He's just yelling at him. Yeah. Quack, quack, quack. <laughs> yeah, trying to get the... <laughs> and then you got my duck call sound smooth as silk. Man, Springer, that thing sounds terrible. Well, the thing about it is, though, he's got the projection on that thing, man. I mean, they can really hear it from a distance. He's not highballing every time, too. But when he even chuckles, man, it's pretty dang loud. You know, when he's sitting there, you know, he's, yeah. he, I mean, he's pretty loud then. He, you know, so he's got the lungs on him. I've been smoking too long. <laughs> <laughs> Bring an air compressor with you. No, but, but, it, but it is mainly to go out there and visit with your friends. And dove hunting is that way to me. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not that mad at doves. And I'm, I really, I'm kind of mad at ducks a little bit. But I'm not as mad as I used to be. Used to be like, let's kill them all. Kill them all. Yeah. But. But let's get back to your elk hunting thing. So, do you ride in a four wheeler and shoot them? I don't ride on a four wheeler and shoot them. No, but I'll ride a four wheeler to get to positions to just take off and then walk. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you do so, walk up on them, or yeah. So like uh, last year when we were in Montana and stuff, we were up on a up on a uh, Lem High Pass. I never should have said that. That's I'm giving up a spot. Damn it. <laughs> Um, but we were way we were up uh, quite a ways and uh i got dropped off at the bottom at at the bottom of the road and just walked up and they my parent my dad and my uncles went up top and then they parked and then they all split off and just walked down do you have a deer stand or do you just walk no we don't do we don't have land like that and the elk can't hear you i mean they'll hear you i mean just you gotta walk quietly just take a few steps and look around be patient. How long a distance are you shooting them from? Oh, it depends on the train. I mean, where I shot my mule deer, it was 400 yards. Okay, do you realize 400 yards is four football fields? Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's a long-ass ways. It's a long ways. What are you using? Are you using a Barrett rifle? <laughs> Right a fifty cal, no, um, no, the uh, Savage Arms three hundred. And how? Do you know what? I, you know what? I don't even know what to say about that. Four hundred yards. Four hundred yards drop like a sack shit. Just drops. You just, ain't got. You ain't got trail or nothing. No, and just drop. And that's meat for the family for a whole year. Yeah, we, that's still, we still have it. Yeah, I got. I got. Almost. I think I got two hundred pounds. Two, almost 200 pounds of Man, deer meat. I wish I could somewhere I could get some of that. I mean, I'd like to have some. Just I heard it's really healthy for you, too. Uh, deer meat is a little bit leaner. Elk meat's where it's at. What, well, like uh, elk burgers or whatever? Oh, yeah, know. and elk pot roast. Amazing. Um, elk tacos. Amazing. Elk tacos. Oh, dude. Yeah. All right. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to get off elk. So you haven't seen Bigfoot up there, huh? I, I dude, I don't know. Do you know Mount Mount Rainier? It, it, that's that's not well. That's that's uh, the other one. But there's there's like a few. There's some up there that's known for. I mean, mm-hmm. extraterrestrial book activity. Yeah, I know. When I went up to North, out you know, by Hanford, in in uh, in Yakima, Yakima. Yeah, there's some crazy shit that happens out there. Have you ever seen any lights up here? Dude, I have seen some stuff in the sky at late at night, and they move real quick, and then they just stop, and they just sit, and then all of a sudden they move, and then they stop. But it's like this was before drones when I saw that. Right. I mean that I mean that we had always seen drones out and about, like doing camera work and stuff. Right. This is, I mean, these are bright lights, but. I don't know. Speaking of drones, I'm, I did an experiment mm-hmm. when I was in Missouri with my drones. When a little lady lived over there before I moved the family over here. I basically flew my drone across the town. Mm-hmm. Nobody said a word. Nobody said. Nobody that. tried to shoot it down. But I'm saying nobody went, oh, what is that? This is in the middle of the night. Nobody said, oh, what the hell? Nobody complained. Nobody nobody said a word. So I was like, so you don't know what's flying over your head sometimes. Yeah. 
I got a feeling. Because you just think, man, what is uh, Whatever. The, the only, it's not bothering me, so why, why do I care? I am definitely not a UFO skeptic. I, I do believe in aliens. I am one. I'm from another planet. <laughs> no, but seriously. I'm, I'm, it's I'm, true. It is true. I, I Well, I just can't believe that my people, the way I think, is anything like the humans. I just can't. And I tell my kids all the time, we, we aren't from here. There's no way. I mean, I got proof of that shit. All you got to do is just look at twerking. Can you believe that's really people I did think. that? Yeah. I mean, but, you know, it's kind of like you go to the nightclub and it's like you see this woman twerking and then you're going, you can hear like the National De- Geographic freaking announce, going, this is a human woman trying to attract men with her dance. <laughs> At the Smithsonian Museum. Sometimes she winds up with one man. Sometimes, Sometimes she, ends she winds up, in- up with all four men. <laughs> As the men stare, she twerks and she calls them in to mate with her. It's like, dude, it's like, what is wrong with you people? Twerking, I gotta admit, man, we all like watching it, but it's like... Hey, hey, think about this. 2022 versus 1930s dancing. Think about this. Men and women in 1930s versus men and women today. Yeah. I mean, me... I like working out shit like that. But you put me in a hot situation, like a 100-degree situation, and, man, you'll hear me bitch all day long. <laughs> Those men didn't do that back then. They're like hardcore, you know? Yeah. You know? I mean. Somebody cuts his arm off. I tie it off. We got to go back to work. Yeah, man. I put my, some, my, some methyl laid on it, man. The band-aid. We're ready to roll. If you were to go and take a video of a female twerker, <laughs> female twerker twerking in the 1930s and sent the video back to the 1930s, they would think that it was some kind of crap. This person needs to go to the loony bin. Yeah. And you got to she, say she's possessed. He's possessed. If you don't look at it, if you look at it in an alien way, if you look at it like, like me, I'm going, are they kidding? I mean, really? I mean, this is really happening. And then you got girls on freaking TikTok doing that shit. Yeah, I'm trying, like, I'm trying to become famous. And, it, and that's the goal. I'm going to twerk my ass for you to like me. The Amer- now, how, how low is, in your own <laughs> self do you have to this be This is for the that? American female woman. She is doing a dance to attract male American men. <laughs> It could be one. It could be four these days. <laughs> Polly, you know. And it's probably the one with the with the really fancy clothes and the funny haircut. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's the worst thing about it. And the most drugs. That's what's even terrible about it. Like, hey, man, yeah, the guy that's going to make her feel the best. Or make her feel special because somebody didn't or something. I don't know. Anyway, there's nothing wrong with twerking. If you guys want to twerk, twerk your ass off. I just think it's silly hey, if shit you're gonna twerk, world. If you're going to twerk, twerk it to roll it, roll it country. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to learn. I'm going to learn today how to twerk. And I want to do a twerk on the podcast and have, have my old, because it's her birthday, so I'm going to twerk for her. Oh boy! Now listen, I don't know how this is gonna work out. I don't know how exactly it's done. I'm gonna have nine one one ready on the phone. Yeah, I'll probably throw my back out. They probably hit carry me off with a stranger. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> no, I'm just saying, man, from an alien standpoint. Now look, you're from another planet. You come here. You see that? You're like, why? <laughs> why did they, I? Why did they, I come here? I mean, are they are they joking? I mean, is this some kind of it looks like a Saturday Night Live skit. It's so ridiculous. It's like, man, it's good dancers. There's good dancers. Kind of like I saw this thing. Dude, you have got to see Tales of the Heart with Kevin Hart. Oh, my God. It's the funniest you've ever seen. Oh, seen my it God. It is so funny, dude. We got to watch that after the podcast. I swear, I was crying laughing. I just ran up on it one night while she was in the shower, and I'm watching it. <laughs> it's it's so funny. He gets in a fight with the with his trainer on the airplane, his private plane, right? He's like, <laughs> dude, it's so funny, dude. He's like, I'm gonna 
kill you when you get off the plane, man. <laughs> he like, he like this dude. Like he looks like oh god, you know. He's like oh god. god, you know. And Kevin Hart, you know, he's a short feller. He's just like sitting going, man, I'll fuck you up, man. <laughs> and, and, and his crew like was holding him. He's like, man, we were drunk, we were drinking, man. I couldn't help it. Dude grabs back and punches him right, whatever, holding him. He's like, well, get off his plane, you're mine. <laughs> Anyway, uh, you gotta oh see. You, gotta, you have to see. I, I do love Kevin Hart. I just haven't seen it yet. Anyway, he he had this thing on there about police confrontation and stuff. But it was it just, it's funny anyway. Back, to, we're gonna get all plugging him. I gotta get that dude on here one of these days. I swear I'm going to. That dude's one of the funniest people I've ever seen in my life, man. But it he gets pulled hilarious. over by the police. And he's got. Well, I forgot what the dude's <laughs> this other comic dude. With this, oh my god. This oh dude. yeah, dude! I know. You know what I'm talking about? I think so. He's like, you're weak. You're weak. Tell it to the police. And he takes the police and turns them over on the freaking hood of the car. <laughs> <laughs> he's like sitting there. He's like, yeah, this is before Kevin Hart was really Kevin Hart. You know, yeah. they're just doing like these college tours. Anyway, it shit is funny, man. Why's it been his freaking? Why's it been jail with him and stuff? He's like, man, why were you there? What do you mean? The fight the cops with you? But he, I don't know. I got off on a tangent there. Squirrel, squirrel, squirrel. Squirrel. Yep. Anyway, um, so <laughs> how do you feel? Let's get back to music for a second, okay? Because obviously you got any Bigfoot things for us, and I just, I mean, and it's hey, okay, buddy. No, we're like, really here to talk about your career and as I have a good podcast. Be, I mean, I've been hunting a few times where I've gotten up in the middle of the night and gone out to take a leak and. You hear some shit in the woods. You like try to get it over with, shake it, and get back in bed, and hope hope that you didn't bring them in with you. <laughs> that's uh, <laughs> that's how I felt when I was up there. I felt like when I went outside the van to take a piss at night, I felt like I was definitely being watched. Then that feeling of being watched, like especially when you walk out and a just, real close feeling of being watched, like in the light of the moon, and all you see is the ground. Mm -hmm. You don't see anything in the woods. All you see is what the light is hitting. You don't see anything in the woods. You're like, man, this is an eerie feeling. And especially if you're like, oh, there's fog on the ground too. We'll see where we went. We didn't see nothing. I think we did see a frog. One frog. No, I don't even think we saw that. Well, a lizard. Yeah. One lizard, and he was hiding under logs. I freaking turned over. So whatever's up there is eating things, eating everything. But uh, <laughs> let me ask you something. Shoot, what? What's that's what I'm doing? But it's kind of silly things. Let like me that. let me let me ask, ask you something. something. Let me ask you something. How do you feel like you fit into the Nashville music scene? How do I feel? Yeah. Well, I'm serious. Give an honest question. Be honest. transparent on the black sheet, baby. Do you feel like you fit in here? No. That's why I, that's, I don't care. I don't care if I fit in. What I care about is making music that I like. I would say the key is to standing out. Yeah. Don't be a sellout. Well, and you know, I have nothing against good-looking fellers with fancy hairdos, but yeah. even though I'm bald, I should have something against them. Um, you're not really one of them fancy fellers. They're pretty outspoken. Um, and uh, sometimes you don't, you know, you gotta kind of keep it down a little bit. <laughs> oh yeah. But no, you know, I just wonder, like, um, because it seems to me like um, you're more lean toward the rock instead of the hip hop part of it. And I'm, I'm, I don't know, man. It's, it's. I, I don't have a genre really. I just, I don't have it. no f's given music really um it's i mean you kind of when we worked together you kind of brought out a side that was there but not fully well i just got harped on your strengths yeah and you shaped me to be into a better musician twice over we went pretty hard though at first round <laughs> We was, did. We did a little bit, maybe, maybe. But that I think is what helped us do the second round, right? For the oh, second yeah. half of the record, we it was like, it was like um, uh, training day. 
And I think it was, though, too, man, a reality check for me as far as, like, the country music scene here looks at me like I got three heads, you yeah. know, and they, they're always going to. I helped produce Digimortal, you know, um, Fear Factory. I mean, you know, and some heavy bands, some Bull Devil Jacket and a lot of bands that were just a little bit, you know, Greenwheel's probably the last thing, you know, I'm known for, you know, as far as that goes. I'm getting there, though. New Jersey has got stuff as heavy as it can be. I'm, I'm doing a Christmas record with, with uh, Tantric and, um, you know, me and Hugo. Um, but I think, you know, I want to go a little bit different direction this time around as far as just being more about you being a songwriter, you know. I think yeah. that's what's coming up for you. But right now, it's like AC, DC country. Yeah. Redneck rock. Yeah, it is redneck rock. It's redneck rock. And I think the world's missing that because, you know what, every ACDC fan wishes there was a country artist that had that groove and that hip. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that slingshot. I mean, it's like, you know, something you can twerk to, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Move your hips. I'm telling you, man, I'm going to be twerking like a son bitch here in a little bit, man. I'm telling you. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to video that, put it on TikTok, man. It's going to go viral. Yeah. Hell yeah. It's going to go aluminum. And all these women are going to be like, man, man, you got a nightmare. going to be meshing, meshing Tiffany about how cute my tater is. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, so how has it been working with Jason Shrek and, as a manager? As of right now, I couldn't ask for a better, better one. And um, he's a good dude. He means everything that he says. He doesn't. He doesn't. Yeah. And he, he and he he works you. He works you hard. If you if you want it, you're gonna work just as hard as he is. I, I think you know not only because he's a close friend of mine and fraternity brother. Um, I think he really is an up and coming guy. Now he's teamed up with with Jeff Hansen. It just now picked you up with him. And, yeah. Uh, a real mentor yeah. for Jason that that's going to it's going to slingshot him over the top because it'll make him be affiliated with somebody like that is you know of course he's my manager too yeah uh, I think man <laughs> Jeff manages me for sure I talk to him two or three times a day sometimes you know we wear each other out I know he does cause oh dude I, I <laughs> wear no Jason problem. out like it's not and, funny dude and, and Jeff doesn't funny, mind funny. me tell you as a manager though he moves fast he don't wait. Yep. But and he, that's what I need. He, I don't I don't like the, the sit and wait kind of thing. It's like I want and, and results. I, I I have a lot of that's why I never could be a manager and why I need one. Me, I want to procrastinate everything you guys Tiffany, man. God, I gotta get this done, God I gotta get that done, God I gotta get this. Hey baby, come over here. <laughs> it's not you know what I mean? Oh hey, Colin, what are you doing? Oh yeah, let's watch some ancient aliens. Um no, I'm I'm serious, like um it, he's one of those movers and shakers where all of a sudden something you're moving and shaking like you don't even know I mean, yeah and, 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 and you know he in the country market man you know man he's connected everywhere he managed Creed he's a, he's a freaking legend what are you talking about I mean Jeff Hans is just a flat out walking legend and the guy was, he has nine lives hell he should have died five or six times already I mean, the dude's had cancer. He's a car wreck. All these crazy shit. It's like, it's like what is wrong? He's with a you? walking movie, dude. He, he is because it's like, what are you doing? I mean, I mean, it's like, dude, it's like, how in the world did you live through that? How did you live through that? It's like, he's just, a, you know, you know who Jeff reminds me of. He's gonna kill me because he's gonna watch his podcast. He reminds me of Brett Favre. He really does. <laughs> Dude, he even looks yeah. like Brett Favre. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, and I watched, I watched the one podcast that you guys did with him, and I was like. He's like a Brett Favre. He, he looks like Brett Favre. He's always reminded me of Brett Favre. I told him that years ago. Uh, but he does have a Brett Favre. I'm tough as hell, pocket quarterback type of vibe. I tell everybody where to go, and you go. Yeah. And I'm moving down the field. If you want to stay here, you're going to be by yourself because I'm moving down the field, mm -hmm. and that's what I love about him. And uh, all these other uh, managers that just talk a bunch of, you know, I mean, just lit. And they want all the percentages. Yeah. You want 20% of me. But you're not like, doing what's twenty percent of nothing? <laughs> <laughs> nothing. No, I'm getting the gigs. What are you talking about? Jim's like, we gotta get this on a video game. We got we, we gotta get this right. man, you got we got tracks, we gotta do we got you know, it's like, whoa, man, I'm not used to somebody actually working, you know. Hey man, you need to get me this, you need to get me that. I'm like, I'm behind. Yep. He's moving down the field, Malcolm Springer Field, and I'm sitting here going, 
I'm oh, on the sidelines. He, he told me this, this today. He told me to do something. I felt like shit because, dude, he told me to do this a month ago. And I just hadn't done it because I had I got the kids, you know, and I'm like, oh, man, he's going to think I'm slacking, man. But when you got somebody working hard for you like that, and Jason Shrek, too. Jason, You want to work just as hard. But no, but Jason, I swear to God, it's like you'll be talking about doing something. Well, fly back here. All of a sudden, man, you're like, man, who are you on the phone with? I'm on the phone with the airline. What are you talking about? <laughs> it's like, wait, well, hang on here. What day? What are we talking about? You know, it's like, you know, it's like those guys, they'll be, they're, they're going to be awesome for you. And I think we're going to, we're going to home right in on a, a deal, a really good deal, I think, pretty quick with you. You know, I know that Jeff's going to want to run up the numbers and, you know, he's going to want to come to town. And he's coming to town next week, too, by the way. He's coming. Um, that We have a big meeting about the podcast and everything. And, um, it's going to be really awesome. I'm 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 excited, <clears throat> and uh, I think we're going to get some country music guys on here. You're our first country music guy. Thank you. And we've done a podcast before, but man, it, it, I'm going to tell you what it looked like. I'm not blaming. I'm not blaming sidetracking there. I'm just saying, dude. I look like I had ran ten miles, and I look like I was sweating the whole time. Like yes, that's the reason why we couldn't use it. I'm like, dude, if if. If somebody sees me looking like that, man, they're going to think I'm on fucking some kind of amphetamine or something. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is that? I mean, it looked like, I mean, I couldn't even believe it, man. When I saw it, I was like, man, I look bad enough as it is. Don't make me look worse. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me look like. So, so, okay. What is your, who inspires you to do all this? Who inspires you to do music? Who, what country artists did you really, really get into? I've always loved Travis Tritt, and I've oh, all okay. and, and Brooks and Dunn. Travis Tritt, yeah, yeah, dude. Um, um, Keith Whitley. Um, well, that's my that's my old lady's uh, mm -hmm. distant cousin there. I uh, dude, I I remember when I'd be in high school and I'd have my CD player, or not in high school, um, elementary school. I'd have my CD player on the bus and I'd have a, like a pocket. I have it, and I had another pocket. Just had like a little case of CDs, and I had like five or six CDs I'd interchange, and I that would be like one of them. One would be like the Fabulous Thunderbirds, the other one would be like microphone. Yeah, uh, it'd be like uh, Sawyer Brown. Next one would be Bob Seger, um, and then George Thorogood. And it was just like I would just swap out CDs, but. I got bullied a lot in school, so music was kind of just music has always been around from in my in the household and stuff. And I grew up dancing to it and just humming and plucking on a guitar. Not like really. you got bullied. Yeah, you. <laughs> yeah, dude. Like a lot. Really? Yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Weird, right? I know it doesn't. Yeah, but. Yeah, I, I brought my guitar to school every day. I would sit and I'd practice, and I would just, just go over stuff in my head, and people walk through the halls and making fun of me and stuff. And now those same people want tickets to the shows, and I tell them to buy them. They're not getting them for free. Well, you know, here's the thing. Life is like prison. Mm -hmm. Not that I know anything about prison. Neither do I. I'm just saying... I've been throwing a slammer a couple of times for stupid shit, but but no, uh, it's been even real time in there or anything. But the thing is, though, what you hear about in prison anyway, because I never really was in prison, you hear about well, you got to set your set your tone right off the bat. Yeah, and the bully thing. I just want to go back to that for a second because I think it's a good thing. You seem like the guy like, like I was. Okay, you want to bully me? All right. I'll pick up a baseball and throw it at you and hit you upside the head and all of a sudden everybody goes, oh, that's mm -hmm. or how about, I think there was one time I took an aluminum bat and freaking hit somebody upside the head. I can't believe he didn't kill him. They needed it. And then there was one time my brother started shit with me and guess what? I took, when we, when we were playing wiffle ball and I, listen to this, dude, I freaking swam <laughs> right across the forehead and guess what he had a school he had to go to school the next day he had a big old whelp right across his forehead he looked like a cling hug <laughs> <laughs> that's when you set your boundaries you know so you people out there have anybody kids no no I, I, I used to be like that I had a, a kid that would just taunt me and I finally just had enough of it one day and it was in the gym and I just went to town <laughs> just went to town and I didn't get messed with after that. I feel like that's what is going on with you musically. 
you've been on the kid on the playground, kind of getting picked on for a little bit. Now you hear the mad little son bitch coming out swinging. And I think that's about to happen. I want to ask you though, because you left out a band that you really talk, you really sound like, and that's because of some because of me. But now that's not all my fault. The, the ACDC thing is not my fault. No? Yeah, I, okay. I love the ACDC. Okay, I, I you, loved it. I led you to the water, and you drank <laughs> the whole dang thing. I, I, um, dude, I, that's the thing. Like, I, I it wasn't until I got like 14, 15, when I really dove into like the classic rock, like Pink Floyd and uh, um, Derek and the Dominoes and Eric Clapton, like I and, I, and like Jimi Hendrix and. Um, heart and I was just going back and forth through a whole bunch of stuff and um, it was just that oh, I lost my train of thought by ACDC yeah um, I was in school and I, I started really listening to ACDC it was back in black I remember it and I just loved the sound of that record, everything about it. I know. Man. It's just, I think, one of the top five best produced rock oh, records of all time. Oh, definitely. Of all time. Um, and so when I was at school, I would, my mom had an eBay account and I got wind of the information and logged on and I was at school and I was, and I, there's a LP, uh, like it was a, a six, LP collection of ACTC records. Wow. And they were it was 60 bucks. <laughs> so 10 bucks a piece, right? Right. Well, it went up to 80 and then it went up to 100 and I kept fucking bidding while I was at school doing my homework oh, and, I'm, no. and I'm, I, I, I I'm watching it on like the computer on like the eBay countdown. I'm like All right? and I was like 180 sent it and I was like F I didn't mean to do that <laughs> and I was like 108 I'm like okay she she won't know she won't know oh yeah yeah she won't know she knew and so like a week later right I get a text while I'm in class and I'm a dumbass for answering it because I didn't really pay attention in class <laughs> there's a package here with your name on it what did you order and I went, um, I don't know. She goes, that's really weird because my bank statement also has a $180 charge to eBay on it too. <laughs> and I went, uh-huh. And she's like, how about, you, how about you tell me what you bought? And I was like, um, L Records? $180 worth? I went, No just six and she's like what the hell were they I was like ACDC oh jeez and conversation got dropped imagine got home that night you're gonna pay me back I didn't pay her back <laughs> I didn't pay her back because and you know why because your mom really loves you and because she's like I'd rather you spend it on that and then other than drugs or something yeah. stupid right yeah, because I used I used to be stupid with frivolous buying purchases, and just let them for back and forth about stupid. Well, I'm gonna get <laughs> I say a I'm, lot about. I lot mean, right I'm, now, I'm still kind of like that, but I, I had to become kind of an adult and right. watch my spending. So, yeah. you know, life, life, that kind of thing, and uh, life, love, and the pursuit of the dollar. <laughs> so. The big question is where you see yourself in five years. Rocking it up with Malcolm Springer and Jeff Hansen. I mean, on it, tour. tour. Tour, I mean, doing a headline thing. Headlining. Headlining. Stadiums. I do too. Stadiums. I do too. I think, I know you can do I it. I know that that's a big, giant leap, and I know that it's not going to happen overnight, but I think I'm a guy that grinds. The reason why we're doing this podcast, you're my friend, but but you're now, my friend, but now this thing's gonna be worth a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll NFT go this. Go, Dakota Portman was on what the Bigfoot Aliens podcast? Oh, no way, years ago. What they're gonna go back? 
you know, in millions of goals. So yep. here's the goal. The goal is, man, is get some more songs going. Yep. And uh, we're going to see what we're going to do with this next single, which, you know me, I mean, liar, liar, pants on fire. But no, 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 I mean, I don't know if that should be the one. I just know that the Black Sheep is going to be a big one because, you know, you were saying you're going to be the Black Sheep. And that song is about that, right? I mean, really yeah. it is. Um, and, and I'm, man, we had a lot of writers on that song. We, we all, man, we, oh yeah. We had a whole day worth. Let's just go backwards for a second. I'm so sorry. I, I have to ask you, how do you feel about the writing teams we had? I thought we had some really great writing Heavy teams. Heavy hitters, man. We had a bunch of good good ideas, good lyrics came through. Stuff that, I mean, we kept, we didn't keep. It was just awesome to know that everybody was in it t together. Like, you know what? This this is going to be something. It's going to be big. Yeah, and everybody wanted in on it. Everybody everybody wanted a piece of the cake, People man. People driving in from all over the world. <laughs> right on this record. Because they know when they hear the genuine excitement in my voice about an artist. And uh, and to be honest, we mean you could have wrote the whole record by ourselves, of course. But, man, it wouldn't have been the same. It wouldn't have been the same. No. I don't think it would have been the same energy. Brian Fox is a bad son, bitch. Boy, he is good, man. And. We, you know, we had Hooky Top Line in Hooky there. Top Line, Rick Monroe. Rick, oh, big time, Rick. And, you know, Scott Wilson, I think he's a little sore by us not doing, you know. The Bigfoot song? Yeah, the Bigfoot song. I told um, him, I said we should do it again, though. No, but we, we, we can get that in on the next one, man. I want it to be more like a Copperhead Road type of thing. Oh, yeah. You know, that type of vibe on that one, you know. I like that. Real just kick drum and just really airy kick drum and stuff. Here we go. I mean. The thing is about this podcast is, is I don't want to go too far where the, the people, the ordinary people are going, ah, what the hell? I mean, I mean, and then you don't want to go not too far enough to go, hey, you know, this is what we're we're planning on recording. What is it? Um, holler. Buffalo Holler. Buffalo Holler. So we're going to do a song called Buffalo Holler with Scott Wilson and Dakota wrote that I think we should do Copperhead Road to. And I, oh, Scott, uh, I Scott, talked to Scott, Scott this wrote morning. It. Scott wrote the song. Oh, I thought y'all wrote together. We, we, he had the first part of it, and he took it to me, and we we kind of worked on him a little bit. But I mean, he he wrote most. Scott of it. Scott Thanks. Wilson from the band Saving Able. He's a, he's a good dude. He's got yeah. some good songs. I think he's been playing with somebody else, but I'm not allowed to say too. And I think he's been doing a lot of. I think Scott is like, man, we become pretty dang close. He's like, been there for me, man, through some things, and you know that. You know, nobody else was really there for me besides, you know, Tiffany and uh, and the kids. But didn't know. See, people just didn't know. Yeah. You know, so if people don't know that you're hurting. People don't know that you're hurting. You know, yeah. and uh, and I was good at getting on here and acting like everything was cool. You know, while I was barely walking to my car. Yeah, but uh, but anyway, <clears throat> Case Tractors. Let's take a break. We'll come back. Here we go. Here's your uh, favorite dude, man. <laughs> 